Hey guys, it's Nick from Retro Games HQ, and today I am interviewing Merg from Jumping Pound Games. Now, Merg has made a game called Mergles uh, last year, I think late last year, and Mergles is a monster taming game, a Pokemon-like game that was actually not completed. Later in the interview, he talks about wanting to make five, six, or eight worlds. He only made one, uh, and you know, he... he talks more about that in the interview right now he's actually working on a MOBA game he's actually constructed a team which we talk about a little later also it's called project mobar so if you want to check him out at the end i'm going to have a discord link uh, invite link invite link to his server um it's pretty interesting because uh, he talks a little bit about it but i'll go ahead and just let you all listen to the interview i hope you enjoy it so have you played Murgles? No, I've been doing other things, but I want to, because it looks like it's pretty good, especially considering, um, you know, you have like the healer tank and uh, damage roll kind of in it. Yeah, so there's about uh, three hours of gameplay there. It's fairly difficult. Um, probably one of the biggest challenges is getting past the interface. There are some interface challenges because th that I uh, I came cross when i was making it but uh it, summoning your first mergle is a little tricky but it's just the way that i programmed it. i couldn't figure out how to fix it to make it smoother one of the last things i wish i could have dealt with but uh so bear with the game and play through it but yeah so uh, to, truth be told mergles is uh i would say fairly incomplete um i set out on this game development journey uh well i guess at the time i had quit my job that I was working in. I thought I decided I was going to go full time into game development. I'd figure I'd pump out a full game in like three to six months. Um, I actually thought originally I thought I could be able to you know, put something together pretty decent like a month, but I ended up taking way longer than I expected. And then by the time I got the original vision was to have like at least five or six, maybe even eight worlds with like eight bosses, eight dungeons, and your Murgles would go all the way up to like i don't know like a little 50 or something but uh i finished the first introductory world which was always expecting expected to be the sh sh the smallest one and uh finishing the first introductory world and the first kind of batch of mergles um ended up taking me six months and i worked quite consistently like we're talking 50 or 60 hour weeks it was like oh my uh, god all i all, all i did for quite a while but <laughs> Turns out making games by yourself is harder, harder than you realize. But yeah, like I said, if you make it through the first, make it through the first little bit, the game gets a little smoother. You'll, you'll undoubtedly run into some little glitches with the user interface. But yeah. So, anyways, I'll let you ask some questions. Did you did you have any uh, like questions in mind for a discussion? Or? Oh yeah. Um, I guess the first one is um, like, what was your motivation? You know, your why behind making it. Um, I've actually, the truth is, so I always really wanted to make games. I've been a huge gamer my whole life. Like I'm, uh, I'm 30 years old now. I think my parents got me, well, they got me and my brother, our first Sega Genesis, when I was like three or four. And so literally like I've played games as long as I can remember anything. Cause I got, I, I, I've got right into that thing. But, uh, when I was maybe 16, 17 in high school, trying to figure out what I was going to do, um, Video game development was actually one of the things that was originally on my list. I went to like a summer boot camp oh. um, to learn game design, and I learned like the basics of I guess it must have been Unreal Engine three back then. But uh, and then uh, I ended up going to university for computer science. Um, not still not entirely sure what I wanted to do, um, but I got kind of got pulled into a different uh, a different career direction. Uh, work in government and studying economics mm -hmm. and then also one of my computer science professors at the time told me and this is the guy who was actually ran the video game program at my university the university of calgary and he told me it was like ridiculously hard to get a job making video games and basically the only way to do it was to go and work for one of the big companies um interestingly enough if i did not listen to that, that would have been like 2009 if I would have not listened to that guy, I would have learned God and learned how to make games. I could have been part of like the indie revolution that you know then occurred over 2012, 2013, 2014. 
when Steam, you know, started just blew up. The whole world. Yeah, so <laughs> I shouldn't have listened to him. But anyways, I, go, I went down another career path for, you know, seven or eight years, and then uh, things changed in my life, and I decided I just wanted to give it a go uh, making games because, like I said, all the way through my 20s and everything, I kept on playing games. I've always been a big crit- uh, critique of video games. Like, I always look at them, and I was like, man, I wish they'd just do this. I wish we could just do this. Mm-hmm. And, like, I have all these dreams and ideas in my mind for the games that I want to make, and I'm convinced would be great if I could actually just make them. Uh, so I just decided to go for it. So I quit my job, and I guess that would have been spring 2018. I quit my job and then uh, just made games full time for like six months. Well, um, well, like you said, what there's gonna be like eight worlds. Is what like your original goal was like eight worlds? Okay. So the truth is, I looked at this, and because I'm making a simple 2D RPG, I sat down. I figured out how to make a system where you could catch monsters and you could level up monsters and you could store monsters and i was like holy crap like basics of the game are here i was like i could whip this game together so quick (laughs) so in in the early days i thought yeah i thought i could probably make eight levels super quick um and just pump it out with like 100 to 150 mergles and i'd finish that in a month or two and then the reality was much, much, much slower once I actually got into the nitty gritty of it. Right. Yeah, I'm. I'm I've been paying attention to some, um, you know, uh, indie games that's in the same genre, just a monster like taming Pokemon like, and mm-hmm. the development for these indie games uh, are so much longer than what you would expect from the uh, outside looking in. Like even simple looking yeah. ones are take long because even once you get it all done you still have the whole problem of bugs you know and it's just little things you know like a great example i don't know what the heck was going on but like i told you i figured out the monster catching and monster storing system really quite early on like that was literally the first thing i did and as soon as i figured that out i was like damn i could make a game for sure but there was like it was like every month the system would just break and I'd go back through and I'd look at how it worked and it's all done in JavaScript and it just would just break over and I'd fix it and then it'd all be good and then all of a sudden it'd just break again and it was it was just the strangest mystery to me of all time and so like that was that's an example another example is like I knew as a matter of fact I wanted to have tanks healers and damage and in order to have tanks in a game like this it just couldn't be done without a taunt mechanic. Um, so a mechanic that forces the enemy to target you. Right. And I made a taunt mechanic in one day um, where I could make the enemy AI taunt me. And then at the end of the day, I tried to put that mechanic over onto the... or I, Sorry, at first I made it so I could taunt the AI, so they had to attack me. But then when I tried changing that over to force the to get the ai to force the player to attack them it didn't work whatsoever because it's, it's entirely different logic what? same spell totally different logic because one of them is to tell an npc we want to do the other one is to take control away from the player and change what the player is even allowed to target and what it has to target so um... it's like this 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 one little taunt mechanic ended up taking me i think like three or four days to figure out how to make a spell that would taunt the ai in one way and then taunt user players a different way and then, you know that's that 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 ended, up, that ended up like three or four days but you just add these things on um evolving a mergle so like when a mergle evolves it uh it triggers a a bit of like a, a little bit of an animation like a screen pops up some lights flash and stuff and it's like oh no what's happening <laughs> your mergle evolves but it's like I had to get the sound made for that. I have to trigger it so that every time a uh, Mergle levels up uh, to the appropriate level, that Mergle evolves. So it's like just Mergle evolutions. I think that, you know, that's a week. So, and then, and then once you figure out how to do it, then you get to apply it to every single one of your Mergles, right? So oh. if, you're, if you're making 30, 40, 50, or 100 Mergles, it's like you have to do everything a hundred times. And so it's like it's a, you have to copy and paste it and recreate it and change what level it happens, change which change which Mergle turns into which Mergle. And it's like 
every every new feature you add on is like an exponential amount of work i discovered yeah i've done i've done simple coding stuff before um i used to mess around with that same about becoming uh, like computer programmer at one point you know Mm. um yeah even when you copy and paste stuff if you change it a little all you have to do is delete one thing and it poof breaks Mm. you know so i have to do it over and over again i could not imagine the well first off the time yeah because even copy and paste it takes time yeah, I got to tell you, though, like making the project, I loved the work. Like it was mm-hmm. as far as like, I, like being glued to a computer for six months may not sound that much fun, but like I had a freaking blast. And because it was like a little contained game, I was like the master of everything. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. But uh, but yeah, at, did you have any other another question for me or? Oh, yeah. Um, I guess how many like. uh. I guess Murgles or whatever. Uh, did you like put in overall? I think. Well, I have art for like two hundred. Oh. I think there's like forty two or thirty six or something in the game. I haven't worked on Murgles in. Well, I guess it came out a year ago. It's like the one year anniversary, so I haven't worked on it in a year, to be honest. Well, then, I kind of forget. What made you decide to just like okay, I've got to quit this. I've got to move on to. I guess at that point you already knew you were going to do the MOBA game. Um, so like, I'm sorry. Like the goal is to be able to make video games, um, and actually make a business of it. So for myself, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I always knew that Murgles was only going to be my first ever game because every t- everything I read about video game development, um, online. Uh, anybody I've talked to who has made games, because I, I did reach out and find some mentors. I found some local developers in the city I live in. And everybody I talked to said, like, you want to make games, just start making them and finish one. And then I, it occurred to me, and I, like, I discovered that most indie developers, like, never finish anything. Mm-hmm. So the main goal for Murgles, just finish something and sell it. Sell a single copy and just get it done. Um, but uh, I guess by the time I finished the world, six months in, um, I had done a lot of thinking about how much money this thing was going to make. You know, obviously, you know, like the dream is to be like Stardew Valley, some cool, awesome 2D game that like hits it big. But the reality is, like, that's what I call it. Like, you know, the odds of that happen to somebody, especially in their very first game, kind of like winning the lottery. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, after I worked on it for six months, I think I sold like 200 copies, which, you know, is uh, not a lot at $10 a copy or whatever. But uh, the truth is, selling 200 copies on your first game is actually pretty successful. But it's just, uh, it's pretty hard to make 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 money in these small scale games. So I realized, like, if I was really gonna make it in the video game industry, I needed to go bigger. Mm-hmm. And based on how long Murgles took me, I realized I needed a team, and I wasn't gonna be able to do it alone. And you're assembling that team now, I guess. I have that team now. You have it. Um, already. I'm not, yeah, so I'm working on Project Mobar. Um, we've got a team of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine permanent members, as well as somebody who's volunteering as a designer, as well as a contractor. So I guess all in, Project Mobar has 11 people working on it. That's the MOBA. That's a pretty sizable like team for pretty much an indie game. Yeah, yeah. So we're taking... and. But like like I said, the number one thing I learned in Murgles is uh, is how long it takes to make games and how hard it is. So we're cutting corners on the art. We're not making, we're doing, we're not we're not making our own uh, 3D model assets. So we're reusing the Paragon characters and reusing props and uh, materials and foliage, all that stuff coming off the uh, Unreal Engine marketplace. Mm-hmm. Um, my personal belief is right now there's kind of a stigma in the game world, but it's really kind of, it's only like an industry insider stigma. It's like they say hey, you're an asset flipper if you use somebody else's assets. But uh, I I truly believe that like when it comes to like indie games, like gamers just don't really care if your art is original as long as it looks good and it's fun. Like that's all that really matters. And actually, the last twenty years of the video game industry proves that most successful pc games in the world haven't been games that were created from scratch it was 
a team of passionate indie developers who get together and mod. Um, and basically, I think the Unity, the Unity marketplace and the Unreal Engine marketplace are effectively the new modding arena. But now, you know, back in the day, modders couldn't really make money on what they do. But now, using the tools available in the Unity and the Unreal Engine marketplace, you can actually turn it into a profitable business. And, you know, the games I'm referring to that were really successful mods, um, obviously Counter-Strike, uh, Dota All-Stars, which turned into League of Legends and Dota 2, um, the, the, the DayZ mod that turned into, uh, you know, Battle Royales, which ultimately turned into Fortnite. Yeah. So there, there are certainly precedents set that if you try a new experimental game, it don't matter if it doesn't use original artwork, <laughs> as long as it's fun, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, gamers, just give us something that's fun, and we'll buy it. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, and, and I don't know. I've never understood the whole, when people, I don't know, um, like, will reuse, because I don't think it's just games. I guess it's a lot of stuff. Look down if, like, you reuse what someone else has done. You know, like, oh, you're not being original. You've taken from someone else. You've not really provided value. But, I mean, a lot of innovations happen that way, you know? Yep, I agree. I think... I think part of it, you know, the, the negative outlook of it at least is that uh, a lot of it comes down to the ego of the artists and the designers involved because they want to really feel that they have to and can take it upon themselves to make something entirely original that is going to be superior to anything else that's ever been made. Um, I very much live by the manager that you should not reinvent the wheel. So exactly. my, my game, the mo like, like, uh, Basically, the the, the, uh, the basis for Murgles was like, let's take Pokemon and let's add in some elements from World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. and let's use a plot type that's like kind of funny and goofy. So like, it's not going to be epic anyways. But now with uh, Project Mobar, the MOBA I'm working on, I've basically we are at a point where I we're taking the best of League of Legends, the best of Dota, and improving upon it by adding in new uh, survival and battle royale type elements. Hmm. See what um even though you know you only got so far in it, how do you think um if someone could do a full game for uh like blending the WoW you know um like healer tank damage. And then put it in with like I guess tops like monster tops I guess, like how well do you think that would do? Like if the, if someone actually did what use that concept that Murgles has, and try to put it into a full game, you know, do you think that system would work well or like does it work well in your in your game? Do you think I, just looking back? I think there's serious potential there. Um, I'm you know I'm, I'm under no illusions that my game is not very good because it's my first <laughs> game, but but from a design standpoint. Yeah, I think there's serious potential there because if you like Pokemon, as an example, is one of the most successful game franchises around the world. There's lots of different reasons as to why. Uh, however, I really feel that the combat and the gameplay uh, is too simple and too easy for non casual or teenage or adult gamers. Mm -hmm. um, I think most of the older gamers, so people over like 15 or 16, ranging all the way up to 30 or 40, uh, that play Pokemon, they, I think a lot of it really comes down to nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they're really being tasked mentally. And I just think that there's this whole audience of people who like a little bit of challenge, and like some strategy, and that's just not present in Pokemon. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe the older games, but I feel like... <laughs> Every, you know, the new Pokemon games are extremely easy. You know, yeah, it's it's grinding rock paper scissors. If they're using a grass type, you use a fire type. If they're using a, a fire type, you use a water type, and you just grind and you just do it over and over and over and over and over. But by adding in that extra element of tanks, heal, damage, the Trinity as they call it, mm -hmm. um, it creates a lot of interesting opportunities for gameplay. So in Murgles, you have in addition to those three roles, uh, you also have the elements on top of that. But then you have a whole bunch of sophisticated combat mechanics. Like you have stun, you have buffs, you have cleanses to remove stuns, remove buffs. You have resurrection, you have AOE abilities, single target abilities. You have heal over time, damage over time. Um, 
and really like the skies that once you get into that creative space of turn-based games with some uh, complex system mm -hmm. really the sky is the limit because then you can once you once you're in that space then you can look at um magic the gathering you can look at hearthstone you can look at world of warcraft you can look at uh, xcom really you can look at any tactical or strategic game and take inspiration from the tools that they put into their strategy game and you can put it into a pokemon type game right yeah i mean pokemon in its typing is complicated but that's about the only thing it's complicated in you know um but sometimes you don't even need complicated rules to have something that's rich, you know? I guess with what you said, you you add those three roles and it changes it completely. Yep, yep. Um, yep. I, well, uh, I guess I got one more question, and it's not really related to all this, but um, what's your favorite book? Uh, the Name of the Wind. Name of the Wind. Why do you ask my favorite book? <laughs> it's just because it's it, well. I mean, I don't. Know, it's interesting. Um, you know, actually, it's I'm, funny because the name of the wind really actually relates to Murgle in a way. Because <laughs> the idea with Murgle is take the concept of Pokemon but make it into something that is more advanced um, for a more hardcore audience you know, mm -hmm. who actually want to think what they're playing. Now, the name of the wind. I don't know if you've read it. But it's kind of like a book about a kid who goes to wizard school with adult themes. So it's kind of like <laughs> Harry Potter for adults. So it's, but it's, uh, yeah, that, that's my favorite book for sure. That's why I know because it's always interesting, I guess, to hear people's uh, favorite books. Uh, I mean, if someone doesn't read, it's kind of difficult to get a handle on. But, you know, mm -hmm. um, really, books can uh, influence how people think. You know, um, their life decisions. Uh, you know, I guess with games, it could even influence games. So, yeah. things like that. But, um, yeah, thanks for this, uh, this interview. You know, uh, when I found you, it was literally, I, I saw Murgles uh, just by chance on Steam. <laughs> and I'm like, I've never even heard of this. You know, I'm like in the, you know, monster taming Pokemon game, kind of like, uh, community and i've never heard anyone mention it before i'm like okay i've got to see some gameplay of it and like the i look up Margles and it's like the fourth or fifth result is like one of your reddit posts about Margles and i'm like okay i clicked it and then i uh <laughs> i figured out wait he's the guy that made it you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i said like go into it with an open mind the interface is incomplete because I just I just couldn't figure out some of the coding challenges with summoning Murgles and storing Murgles. But if you can just basically like you'll just hang with it for a little bit, you'll get it. And I, I I think that like once you start doing the fighting, there's some fun mechanics. Um I also there's like a fire pit there's a fire mechanic similar to Dark Souls where like you have to keep on fighting to the next fireplace and like it's actually hard to get to you're gonna die quite a bit. Ooh. But uh yeah. Yeah, let me know what you think about it, uh, and keep in touch. Uh, one day, I would really like to go back to the concept and improve upon it, uh, but for now, I'm working on this MOBA. Uh, where can people keep up with, um, I mean, I guess you got the Discord. Is that where people would go to keep up with, if they want to pay attention to the MOBA development? Yeah, I just sent you an invite. All right. Well, okay. Thank you for uh, doing this. I greatly yeah, appreciate no, it. Thanks for your interest, Nick. It was fun. All right. Bye. Bye.